That thing just pulverizes it, doesn't it? Yeah. God, there's like nothing left. I didn't think I didn't think that would well, that's that's awesome. I didn't think it would go that hardcore. Yeah, yeah chop that bigger stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna give the guys the tour of the RT50 and you guys at the same time. So this is a brand new undercarriage system and I believe for a machine this size, it is the got the highest ground clearance of, of any machine ever made, period, kind of weird. The widest track and the longest track at the same time. So that means you've got the most ground clearance to come in underneath the machine, underneath there but you're so you got you got all the benefits of a bigger track system that you'd find on a bigger duty machine but you got a small frame so this is a smaller frame system on it but this has more horsepower to power those tracks so they actually took the entire frame and then they you can see what they modified right here with the boom arms see that they cut that out to fit the track system in there that runs a Kubota engine as well I'm kind of pumped to, to give this thing a go. Because you, Tim, were always complaining that you wanted a mid-sized machine so you could get into small, but you didn't want to lose horsepower. And you're not compromising on the tracks. That's the thing. That's where I like this machine. When you go with a smaller machine, you typically compromise on your undercarriage. You compromise on your tracks. You make too many compromises, and now you're not. But we will give it a shot and see how it does because we've got... We got to see if the power delivers because that's a big undercarriage so we want to make sure that it doesn't rob because anytime you have a tracks machine the undercarriage robs power from the engine right i mean that's just part of the way these machines are made
right guys we're gonna get started in the grading in this area this entire ridge has got to come down we're gonna make a new ridge over there because the ridge there isn't as good as a ridge over there no seriously this is gonna be a swimming pool here at some point so we got to level and grade this whole thing out and get rid of the whole thing so let's just do it In this next part, we're gonna start cutting grade, which is typically where you'll see a mid-sized machine with tracks have a loss of power. So we're just gonna listen to this engine run for a bit. Even though I've sped up the action, I've actually preserved the sound so you can hear if the engine's dogging when I'm grabbing soil. It's an interesting one okay we got some very specific contours we got to create in areas we've got to avoid so there's a pool going in right where you're located and we've got a benchmark set right underneath that concrete slab of that air conditioner that's going to be the elevation that we're aiming for in this whole general area outside of here okay now we're going to split the water and make it shed two different areas. We're going to have it go down this way where you guys stuck the silt fence in. And then of course we're going to split the difference and go that way. The high point will be right about here. We've got to create a berm on this side, but she doesn't want the fence to step down as the berm goes. So we don't want the berm at an angle. She wants the fence to stay at a true top, right? So that means that we're going to take that elevation right over there by that tree. You see where I'm pointing between the pine tree and the whatever maple tree or whatever the heck that thing is we're going to take an elevation there and we're going to going to use it to establish as much as we possibly can going all the way across before it drops down somewhere between the buckthorn and whatever that other tree is towards the end okay but we've got to be realistic because we've only got so much dirt that we can generate plus she wants to go out this way with a flat area to, to be able to set up and do weddings out in this neck of the woods right so if you can envision, she's going to have the pool here. Pool equipment will go behind the chicken coop. We need to clean up all that material from behind the chicken coop. Then she's going to run the fence up, which means I got to go in there and start building and forming the berm back behind the chicken coop to create a spot so she can put the pool material in. And then over here somewhere, we haven't determined yet, they're going to put in a pool shed. So we've got to get this area just pretty much level. Then after the pool's in, we'll come back and then do some touch-up grading. And the pool guy himself will be generating fill soil. I talked to him and he's going to be, we're going to be using that as well. He'll be stockpiling it right about where that's at. So for this morning, we can, we don't know if we've got a dump truck yet. I couldn't get a hold of him. If we get the dump truck, we've got to pull the top to the trestle off over there. So, Blaine's got one load to run with it and then we can use it. If we don't have a dump truck, I'm going to send you to go get the dump trailer. If we do have a dump truck... Is that, does that boom go high enough to get over the side of a dump truck? Is it... Does the, it get... The ASV? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It is? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's, it'll do anything any other skid loader will do. And with this amount of dirt we've got here, we can definitely make a little bit of a ramp if we have to. Yeah, I'll just... Yeah, because of the height of the boom, I just didn't think... It doesn't look as long as the other one was, you know. 
So when the Tim shows up with the laser, we're gonna boom set the laser up, make sure that our elevations are on, and see what how much cert we can't touch around the the roots of the tree. So we've got the drip line uh, that we're gonna follow this way. She wants to save this apple tree, so I see the scope of our limits being the drip line, which is somewhere right about. You can see where I put the dirt to protect the tree, and this all comes out. So that's it. That's what we're gonna be doing today. I tell you, I pulled the Timmy. Well, I was sitting in the ASV and I had everything on, right? And I'm grading, 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 and I'm looking at the readout and I'm going, why is my fuel fluctuating so much? Except for that was the fuel. I was watching my RPM going, oh yeah, I got 100% of fuel in it. And then I look over and I'm like, wait a minute, I only got 50% of fuel, but I thought it's because I'm going up a hill and down a hill and flat, and I'm never on one angle. I'm reading the RPM as the fuel gauge, and then all of a sudden I'm like, chit, 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 chit. And I'm like, no, slammed everything down, turned it off, like, like uh, on the dot. You call, the... call Buck. <laughs> Fuel rail low, Buck. I don't know what's going on, buddy. <laughs> Something happened, with, something happened with the fuel. machine, when you, man. When you fueled it up yesterday, did you have to start it to get it over there? I just drove the truck back here. Okay. I just, and put the fuel in it and cranked it for like four minutes. I'm like, <laughs> man, I have to get fucked here and start driving all of a sudden. It just, <laughs> it it's was, no fun. It's no fun to run them out of fuel. Oh, dude, I, I know it was <laughs> now when the machine starts to stammer stutter and I'm like, eh, something's wrong. All right, we got to check the grade out here because I got to see how close I am. Okay, so we've got our elevation set right well, there. Three feet ten and I'll turn the stick around here on the yeah, yeah, there you go. Three feet ten. Alright, let's see where we're at out here. Oh back it up. Go back and wanna see the numbers. Three foot five and a quarter. Okay, that's kind of impressive. Do you want a big pet in the attaboy? Attaboy. <laughs> okay, so 310. So we're uh, high. high by four inches. Whew, so we can come down four there, but go over there. That's where I was set. I don't have this set yet. So yeah, about there. That's kind of where I was thinking I was getting close. So I'm at three foot eleven. So I'm an inch low, technically. Yeah, inch low here. But right here's a little higher, right? Yeah, like yeah that's. There. I don't consider that area done. I consider this area as kind of the grade I was shooting for was right here. So all this right here is probably a little high. A little high. High over there. I mean, you got to be up. Uh, yeah, we're up four inches. We just measured. How are we over here? Where are we at? Four foot two. So we're technically. And then we can steal four. some from that side. So the water comes through this way too. So we can steal some from over there and then just make a mound up to the apple yeah. tree. Yeah. So we're four inches high there. We're high all through there. We're high over here, which has got to go after we get the sod taken out. Over here, you want to start coming down. You yeah. Just drain this way and that way. Yep. And that way. So it's got three different places to drain. Yeah, that was kind of the, the gist of it. So I figured we were close. I didn't see where I could borrow any more dirt from this area to go that way or on to the berm. So.
So I was actually pretty hesitant to test out this ASB50 because my experience with mid-sized track machines in the past really hasn't been all that great. Those mid-sized machines never seem to have enough power and the tracks always tend to steal from the machine. And that's what I was expecting today, but I never actually experienced that even once. So here's another one that some of you guys are going to go, what are you talking about, Stan? And I'm talking about butt feel. And butt feel basically means is how does your butt feel in that machine and do you actually feel like you're part of the machine? And what I'm actually talking about is as you're grading, you can kind of sense where you got to cut, where you got to add, what you got to do. And if you're connected with the machine, everything just kind of flows a little bit more. But if you're at odds with the machine, then you're going to be at odds with the job site. And this machine has a really good butt feel. I don't know how else to put it. I think we got to hit 310. I suppose it helps if I aim it at the laser and not the camera. Three foot ten. Fair mark. Since we're setting up the initial contours for the swimming pool to come in later, we just want this area fairly flat at Three this 11, point. But now. then, after the pool's in place, we'll finish contouring everything out. So we got a little ridge. We got a little ridge right over there we gotta get rid of. See how we're doing. <sighs> 311. We're one inch lower. So we have everything pitching away from the building, which is fine. Let's go down here and see how we're doing. This is where we were a little bit high. Because we want to make sure we have the drainage swale set. Definitely be more aggressive in there, but a lot of that can be adjusted after the pool goes in. Let's see how we're doing. Let's see how we're doing back behind the skid loader. You guys see this ridge right here? Can you guys see that? Okay, we got a two inch drop on the ridge. Let's go in the low point. Two and a quarter over here. Four foot three. So from three foot ten to four foot three to that point, we've got a five tenths. This is a tenth stick. No, this is an inch stick. So we've got five inches to drop. <sighs> right. Well, we're not done.
That could make your day bad all at once. So I was especially hesitant to test out this new ASV50 because it's a mid-size machine with tracks. And typically what I've personally found is that mid-size machines with tracks just lack power. They just don't have any response. And if you go from a big machine and you crawl into one of those little machines and then on top of it, you don't have enough power to get the job done, you're just frustrated. But when I crawled into this machine, I was actually kind of surprised. Well, let me just explain what I mean. It's not a powerhouse, and I'm not claiming that it is a powerhouse, but it delivers enough power to get the job done. When I've been in other mid-sized track machines, you're either dogging power when you're going into a pile or you're cutting grade. It lacks power. The tracks steal from it. Or I've been in track machines where you just have a bucket full and you're trying to climb a hill and it dogs on power. And so I figured I'm going to start to experience some of that, but this would be a great job site to see. And I didn't experience any of that. Now, it wasn't a power house. It didn't overwhelm me with power and give me everything I could ever imagine, but it didn't leave me feeling like I wanted more power. And one of the things that I noticed with that bigger track system, it's really comfortable. And I was expecting that track system to absolutely steal power from the machine and everything just flowed together really well. Now this is a brand new machine, of course, so it should perform pretty good, but there were absolutely no red flags, no indicators that two years or five years or eight years down the line, this could possibly be a problem. Everything just finally felt like you got into a machine that was actually built to do what it should do, what other machines should do. But we still got a lot more testing to do, so I can't make any claims at this point whether this is it or not, but that's what we found out from this job site. And the other job sites we're on right now are going, I mean, the guys like it because it's so light. Here's the side story. We've got a project we're working on Minneapolis, just super tight, guys can't get in, and they have to cross over their work, which is the worst thing you can do, especially when you're building a paver sidewalk, paver driveway, paver porch, and you gotta drive over it to finish the project. Unfortunately, this is a complicated project and that's our only option. And these guys are having zero problems because that ASV, that light little thing, just floats right over the top of it. So we're finding a lot of really good things and so far we haven't found anything bad about it yet. But we still got more time. But we're gonna be trying out another new skid loader coming up. And so we'll just see how things go with this one. That's all we got for you today. God bless, go get them.